everyone uh, we have been listening a lot about smoking and its association with cancer so let me focus today only on lung cancer and we'll start with dr sonali shinde who will tell us what is the association of smoking and smokeless tobacco with lung cancer tobacco uh, can be of uh, smoking it can be smoking of tobacco uh, tobacco like smokeless tobaccos and uh, environmental tobacco Uh, and all of these can cause lung cancer. There is a risk of lung cancer in all of these. Uh, smoking of tobaccos can be by uh, using uh, cigarettes, cigars, PDs, uh, e-cigarettes. And uh, smokeless tobacco is like using of quid, uh, uh, the pan masala, and all. And uh, uh, in environmental tobacco is uh, like uh, using of a, it's it's also called as passive or secondhand smoking. So, So, uh, smoking uh, of tobacco will usually causes about 80 to 90 percent of incidence of uh, lung cancer is there, and uh, whereas in uh, secondhand smoking or passive smoking, there is about uh, two times development of lung cancer. Smoking uh, in in sm- uh, tobacco smoking, the where uh, there are mul- multiple ingredients present in uh, the tobacco uh, smoking, which will be like poly uh, aromatic carbons, nitrosamines, nitrite uh, now. compounds uh, and nicotine is one of the uh, compounds which is an addictive compound whereas uh, carcinogens are different uh, different present in the uh, in the smoke that is like tar poly uh, aromatic carbons and uh, etc and uh, the these uh, the nicotine being an addictive uh, factor uh, addictive compound is uh, uh, it acts as a synergist and it urges a person to smoke more and it is uh, difficult to for cessation of smoking in these people and even in uh, e-cigarettes wherein the they say it is an uh, nicotine free smoking the amount of polyamino hydrocarbons in them and benzene uh, uh, benzene compounds are more and that leads to increase in uh, the risk of lung cancer again and hence it that also there is uh, even if uh, smoking of e-cigarettes there is uh, it's not like there is no risk of uh, l- lung cancer and it can be uh, it's good to use that uh, so uh, as a pulmonologist i'm sure in your practice you see most of your patient often coming with current smokers and or even who have recently quit smoking most often they'll come to us that they have quit smoking and when you take the history they would have said it's been 3 weeks that i have not been. correct so what do you think are the consequences of smoking and at what point in time you tell them start talking about smoking cessation Yes, Dr. Nithi. Uh, it, unfortunately, it is a big problem. Rural India, urban India, the amount of smokers have actually increased. In urban India, it is not just increasing. Uh, people who never used to smoke traditionally are smoking. We're seeing a lot of female smokers. If you ask a professional in India today in an urban setting, uh, a female who, whether you smoke, they won't blink an eyelid. they say yes or no so the amount of smokers have actually increased quite a bit and so it is definitely a challenge uh, it's very unfortunate because we know what the health consequences are it can cause a myriad of problems it can cause a lung issues emphysema of what we call copd chronic obstructive lung disease uh, it can cause tons of cancers almost 27 28 different types of cancer not just lung everywhere in the body it will increase particularly in females uh it increases uh, a lot of gastric issues it can cause heart disease you may not develop lung disease after smoking but you're almost certainly going to have a heart attack and a very good chance of developing lung cancer so the health effects are incredible uh it is costly it is not cheap to smoke anymore puts a burn a big hole in your pocket so all of these consequences are there one of the things that uh, we don't realize many times it is i know people don't like to use the addiction but it is an addiction and many times it is an emotional crutch there is a psychological issue going on they're using this to self medicate so as a doctor you really need to try and get to the the crux of the problem and try and treat the patient holistically here so i have people sarcastically speak about the benefits of smoking you keep the country's population under check <laughs> <laughs> 
even fertility is an issue so again you keep the Correct. country's population under check i didn't i didn't mention that <laughs> so yes so dr pranati i mean you have been taking care of uh, psycho oncology aspects and i mean you run a smoking cessation clinic please talk about all the interventions you do as a psycho oncologist while you talk about smoking cessation so i think as sir rightly mentioned uh, apart from the along with the medical implications that smoking has there are a lot of psychological implications as well like personal relationships get strained their daily functioning gets impaired there there are occupational issues as well they so multiple uh, issues that arise so i think uh, over here what we do is we try to uh, first explain to the client that um, we understand that it's very difficult for them to quit and it's usually they forced into it saying just quit it's so easy what's so difficult about it but we don't understand the intensity of the issue that they have so again as sir did mention that we need to get to the root of it so that's what we try to understand here by uh, starting with under getting a clear case history uh, of their tobacco use that they have had at what age did they start why did they start smoking right now currently what is their quantity what is the frequency of usage all of these details and then going on to understanding that uh what is their level of dependence that is there on nicotine so we do have a test the phagostrom test for nicotine dependence and they can use the uh, this helps determine their level of dependency and we can also try to understand what uh, stage of change they are at are they uh, at a pre contemplation stage or are they at a contemplation preparation action or a maintenance and if they are at an action stage that's usually when they are willing to quit but this is also the stage where they are most at risk of having a relapse or like getting back into smoking so that should be kept in mind and uh, post this it's uh, uh, important for us to help them uh, organize a quit plan so that would be setting a quit date within the next two weeks and um, trying to get other things in order like putting away all tobacco products be it match uh, match boxes and um lighters or anything of that sort uh telling the informing the relatives their friends even people at work everyone letting them know that i would be starting a tobacco cessation and i'd need your support and then helping them become aware of what challenges they would face what could be the possible triggers for them it could be something as simple as waking up in the morning and having tea so that itself could be a trigger so we use cognitive behavioral therapy in trying to help them coming up with various uh, alternative coping strategies in trying to have a different structure do for their day trying to make those kind of changes would help uh, along with that we would also urge them to practice relaxation or mindfulness interventions which would assist them in the process and yeah uh, i think also having uh, a relapse plan in action so that uh, if that happens what are the things that we can do that is something we plan as well so i think this is a gist of what is done Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Venkatesh, can you talk about pharmacological intervention or drug or medicine related intervention when you are trying to quit smoking? Yeah, uh, like we said, uh, smoking is the smoking or tobacco use is the most common cause of uh, cancer related deaths worldwide, and uh, it it not only cancer, it is associated with many other problems like cardiovascular diseases, pulmonary complications, etc. And nearly. there are 7000 compounds which are identified in the tobacco smoke out of which nearly 70 compounds are identified as carcinogens which are directly can cause cancer to human beings and uh, one of the important product is nicotine which is the main uh, main thing which is responsible for the addiction to tobacco smoking or smokeless tobacco use that nicotine uh, it acts in your brain and it causes release of uh, dopamine which gives us a short burst of pleasure it's not long lasting so the people feel like they want to take it again and again that is how it causes addiction so and nearly 28% of population in india is using some or other form of the tobacco tobacco cessation is very important and uh, as we said the uh, pharmacological therapy and behavioral therapy they go hand in hand to prevent uh, or cause tobacco cessation uh, in pharmacological therapy we have uh, multiple forms of nicotine replacement therapy is available uh, as we said nicotine is the agent which is causing addiction to tobacco but it is not the 
causative agent for any cancer it is not a direct carcinogen so different forms of nicotine replacement can be used which includes long acting nicotine replacement therapies like patches which can be applied on the skin and uh, short acting nicotine replacement therapies like nicotine gums are available lozenges are available and nicotine sprays and other forms of nicotine replacement therapies are available apart from nicotine replacement therapies we have uh, some uh, we have few pharmacological drugs like varenicline bupropion which can be used when uh, nicotine replacement therapy is not working so we usually start with the nicotine replacement therapy as when pranati said we fix a date and then we'll start with the pharmacological therapy and we'll arrange behavioral like counseling sessions together with the pharmacological intervention first we start with the long acting nicotine replacement therapies like nicotine patches which comes in 21 mg uh, dosage uh, we can we can start with single patch if it is not sufficient we can add multiple patches and uh, then uh, along with that we have to uh, uh, give them short acting uh, nicotine replacement therapies like gums which is under the control of the patient that is he can take that gums whenever he feels like smoking or using tobacco related products okay then uh, we have to use this nicotine replacement therapy at least for 3 months which can extend up to 6 months to 1 year and uh, along with that we have to arrange regular counseling sessions like first session is very important it should be arranged within 1 week or 3 weeks when the time of relapse to smoking is very high and then uh, every 3 months li or uh, whenever is required we can follow up the patient and uh, i want to talk about the e cigarettes or the electronic uh, nicotine uh, delivery systems uh, these are uh, yeah definitely they are considered less harmful when compared to traditional smoking uh, like cigarettes or bds but uh, they are not completely harmless uh, these e cigarettes contain uh, various chemicals Uh, which which can themselves cause cancer like uh, benzene and some heavy metals which can directly cause uh, malignancy uh, hence these e cigarettes are also banned in some countries so it is not completely safe and uh, as said like prevention is always better than cure so cessation of smoking will uh, causes various health benefits very important data point which dr venkat mentioned is that almost 25 to 28% of the population is exposed to tobacco in some way whether it is smoking themselves or having a smokeless tobacco or even second hand smoke so this is one thing we have to remember and therefore the interventions related to this are very important so let me ask uh, vivek sir that how do you manage a cancer person a cancer patient in general and pulmonary lung cancer in particular in terms of pulmonary rehabilitation what is the advice you would give them and how would you follow them up sir thank you uh as a pulmonologist i just don't diagnose lung cancer i kind of co-manage with the oncology team for the various other things whether they have cough breathlessness whether they're continuing to smoke this is often a very uh difficult thing when a person has lung cancer then continues to smoke unfortunately this is not as good at all for the patient it actually decreases the success rate of chemo or if you've already had your chemo radiation surgery it increases your rate of relapse or even a new cancer so we use all of the strategies that we just talked about to try to get them to smoke of course prevention is definitely better but secondary prevention is just as important so that we do uh, a lot of them will have concomitant lung disease so they'll have emphysema copd and they have a lot of cough and we give them a lot of symptomatic treatment to try and improve this aspect of their life and many times that gives them the energy to go through all the treatment for a better outcome one of the strategies we use here is something called pulmonary rehab and this is an aspect that isn't just limited to lung disease and cancer it is almost in all different lung diseases now it is a structured program where the physiotherapist in concert with the pulmonologist figure out an exercise program where we put them through certain stages of rehab to improve their quality of life things like breathlessness energy levels uh capacity to do things all improve there's a significant improvement in the 
the mental well-being of the patient as well. So they feel better, they feel more confident, and it makes a significant amount of improvement in their overall life. Uh, in some lung conditions, it may actually prolong life. So this is a very underutilized intervention, particularly in our lung cancer patients, that should be thought of. Uh, it is very effective and it actually might even contribute to cigarette cessation because we know that exercise and physical exertion actually improves tobacco cessation as well. So it is overall a very good intervention if we can incorporate it into the overall plan of the patient. So the focus of today's discussion was on two important aspects. One was smoking cessation, which needs to be an integral part of any uh, wide hospital uh, management team. And second thing is pulmonary rehabilitation. This goes hand in hand with management of any comorbidity which is also managed in the hospital setting. And these are the two programs we want to actually bring forth and integrate in our regular practice. Thanks so much.